but hey guys welcome back to another video here at the 4x2 wagon family garage and today we are going to demonstrate what happens to your Eaton 2 track if one side of your wheel gets all kitty wampus off the ground so first of all i want to thank all of you guys who's been supporting my channel and the thanks to that last video i put out there on the Eaton 2 track the demonstration i did in the snow and if you haven't watched that, I'll put that card right here for you guys to check out later on. But I've got a lot of, in fact, vast majority of the comments I got was, hey, this is the one, the best demonstration and, you know, great job, da yada yada, whatever. So thank you guys so much for commenting. But the second most common, well, but the most common question I had about the Intrude true track is, well, what, what happens to the wheel if it's, you know, off, kitty, off kiltered? Off the ground, and so that's what we're going to do today: is share with you guys exactly what happened, what, exactly what will happen in that scenario. And the best place to do that here is here, right here uh, in my driveway. Now, you might say, "Well, it's better to do it out in the field," and I'm going to say, "No, there's just too many variables because I can take my Jeep and and lift one side of the truck." and replicate that exact scenario right here. And this way, this is a controlled environment and it just, it's a very good demonstration and I think you guys will appreciate it. Um, so what I wanna do is first of all, uh, let you guys know that the Jeep is in two wheel drive, not four wheel drive for this demonstration. Now what the intrude track is like a limited slip. Doesn't matter if it's in four wheel or two wheel, the limited slip and or the intrude track, the helical gears works no matter what type of, you know, drive system you're in, whether it's four high or four low, um, it just works all the time. Now, just so you guys know, if you're not familiar with these uh, limited slips or even true track, the helical gear uh, concept, well, basically they are like an open differential, okay? And I'll go through this really quick. There's a lot of videos out there that explains more detail, the nuts and bolts about how they work, but just in summary, they work like an open differential until, so when you're going around a corner, for example, it opens up and makes that turn without any problems, okay? So generally, it doesn't really work if you're turning, which is kind of odd, but also good. Uh, so that way, it, the differential stays open and you don't break anything. Number two, these, hold on a second, I've got an ice cream truck driving by. All right. And number two, these, these uh, limited slip and helical gears works just the opposite of your traditional 4x4 system. So going through this really quick, all 4x4 systems without lockers or a, uh, a traction control system like, like a limited slip or helical gear in true track, all four wheel drive sucks. It doesn't matter what you're driving, all wheel drive, four wheel drive, it doesn't matter. They all suck if you don't have a locker or a limited slip type setup in your guys' uh, differential. Uh, you're just gonna get stuck on a little patch of small thin of ice or snow. It doesn't matter, they suck. And I'm gonna demonstrate that to you guys right here, uh, what happens, okay? So what you really want, if you guys are considering a truly going off-road to explore the mountains, the trails, go camping, overlanding, you should really install a limited slip. Uh, whether it's a clutch and spring load system, which is a conventional system. Uh, but if you guys go down that route, you're gonna need to maintain that, you know, every 20, 30,000 miles. And they are, it's a wear item. So they, they will fail and you have to replace that at some point. Whereas in true track, it's a helical gears and they've been using this technology, you know, military Humvee vehicles. So that's what's in those Humvee vehicles are these helical gear um, system. Now, I don't know if it's an E2 track, but it de it's definitely a helical gear type application where there, it, there's no service needed. It's, just, it's much stronger, beefier, and they're essentially, um, you know, sorry about the pun, but they're literally bomb proof, okay? But that all depends on your driving style. You can break it, don't get me wrong. You can break that helical gear, but they are very, very strong. Okay, now let's get back to the, um, the scope of this video. Uh, we are going to lift up both tires off the ground and we're going to put the Jeep in drive so you guys can get an idea of and see that both wheels does actually turn. And again, we're going to keep it in two wheel drive, both tires will be off the ground and both tires will spin equally. Now, if this was a normal four wheel drive system, uh, only generally, you know, well, 
if you take a normal Jeep like this without the lockers or, or um, limited slip, only one side is generally gonna spin, not both sides, most likely. Now, uh, number two, we're gonna then lower the one side of the vehicle and then and one side being raised up, and then we're gonna do the same demonstration. We're gonna put it in drive and see what happens, okay? So, with that being said, let's get started. And as we go through this video, we're gonna get into more and more uh, in depth about what's going on and explain that and show you guys really what's happening um, with this Eaton True Track system. All right, so here we go. So what I want you guys to focus on here is both of the wheels. Look at both left side and right side. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna put it into drive. Okay, here we go. And you can, and you can see that both wheels are spinning equally at 50-50. Okay, so there you go. Uh, a lot of four-wheel drive systems out there will, will not be split 50-50. It'll be one side or the other. So that's one of the big benefits of this Eaton True Track. Okay, so now I'm going to lower my driver's side, putting this wheel on the ground, and my passenger side is off the ground. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same demonstration. So keep an eye on both the wheels, and let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go, put it in drive. And there you go. So that one spin, but that one spin, but that one didn't spin. That's right. All right, so did you guys get that? So that's basically what happens if you guys were to get one side of your vehicle, the wheel off the ground, it basically spins freely and does nothing. So in a normal you know, condition, you would expect all the power to go to the side that's on the ground. Uh, but instead, all the power went to the one that was basically slipping. And that's basically how a normal four-wheel drive system works. So for this thing to work properly, you need to have both wheels on the ground. Once it goes up off the ground, it's pretty much worthless okay so that's why it's important to have at least one locker in your guys's truck and i highly recommend getting a locker in the front over the back and there's a lot of benefits of, of that process of, for that setup and i will talk more about that later uh, but i will also leave you guys a link down below of another great video by a few of the australian guys who did a fantastic job of demonstrating the lockers between the rear locker and the front locker and i'll leave that link down below and that's what really made me decide to go with the front locker versus the rear locker okay so the next question i had on on my on the, in the comment thread on the last video is well what happens if i was to put my brake or my uh, brake handbrake or put my foot on the brake, will it transfer the power to the side that has traction? Well, let's demonstrate that. But to do that, I'm actually going to remove my, my jack stand and use a bottle jack. So in case the truck moves forward, the bottle jack will just fall over, whereas the jack stand, it's gonna probably cause some damage or break my jack stand. So I'll get that set up. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna uh, take my foot off the brake slowly. Okay, see that? Okay. So now, I'm gonna apply a little bit of a handbrake and take my foot off the brake and, see, and give a little gas and see what happens.
All right, so what do you guys think? Was that a good demonstration or what? I've got the second example set up here. I got the bottle jack up on the passenger side and we're gonna do the exact same scenario, but this time, instead of using my handbrake, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and give a little gas and see if it does the exact same thing. So here we go. Okay, once again, I got it in drive. I'm gonna, let the foot, I'm gonna let the foot off my brake so you guys can see the, the tire spin freely. Okay, there you go. Okay, now I'm going to give a little gas while my foot is on the brake. So here we go. And then let off the brake slowly. I know, that's what it's supposed to do. Well, be honest, is this the results you guys were expecting? If not, I hope uh, you guys will leave me those comments below on what you guys were maybe expecting differently than what you saw right here. Okay, so basically in summary, if you guys were wanting to engage that uh, in true track while the wheel and tire is lifted off the ground, using that handbrake makes the most sense. It was, it was a painless and it worked way better than applying foot brake and then gas, okay? You, hear, you guys probably heard about the, the, the double pedal system. Well, the handbrake and gas just works way smoother as you guys saw in the demonstration. So anyways, I hope that this video was very helpful. And if you guys want to see any more examples or, or if you feel like I could do something differently, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to all of you guys and I will put out those um, scenarios or examples in my future video. And lastly, I, I just want to say thank you guys for all your support in my channel. It's growing and I appreciate all your support in that and hope you guys are in finding my videos to be helpful uh, and entertaining on some things. So again, I will see you guys in the next video and God bless.